Lesson 5.2 is talking about transformations of sinusoidal functions, and that's on pages 238 to 255 in your text. Our curriculum outcomes, again, we're demonstrating understanding of the graphs of primary trigonometric functions. Our lesson objectives, there's only two of them today. Number one, to apply our previous knowledge of function transformations to sinusoidal functions. And number two, to be able to find the equation of a sinusoidal function by examining the graph of the function. Recall from previous lessons a few things. First off, that functions can undergo translations, which we sometimes called shifts. Um, that could be vertical or horizontal. They could be reflected in the x or the y axis, and they could be stretched or compressed, either vertically or horizontally. And each of these things corresponded with a letter in a transformed function. So if our original function was f of x, the transformed function could be written as a times f of b times x minus c plus d. So a, we always said, was our vertical stretch or a reflection in the x-axis. If it was negative, it was a reflection in the x-axis. b, we had a horizontal stretch or a reflection in the y-axis. c was our horizontal translation or a shift left or right. And d was a vertical translation or a shift up and down. And once again, when sketching a transformed function, what we'll probably want to do is start with the main points and then apply the transformations to these points. And remember that we apply the stretches and the reflections first, and then we would apply the translations. All right, here's our example. It says sketch the graph of the following function over two cycles. Y equals negative two sine of two X plus pi over three plus three. And we're gonna be asked to find the vertical displacement, amplitude, period, phase shift, domain, and range of the function. And here is room for our little graph. So first thing we need to do, you need to make sure that we only have a, an X inside the brackets. So that means we have to take out a greatest common factor of two. And that means we are left with X plus pi over six if we were to do that. Now we're gonna start with the main points and we're gonna go from there. So our main points for a sine graph, remember that sine starts at zero, zero, goes up, and then down and then back up again. So our main points are zero comma zero, and then it moves over to pi over two, it gets to a maximum height of one, and then at pi, it's back to zero, and then at three pi over two, we're at negative one, and then at two pi, we're back to zero. So then we suggested in class that we need to apply our vertical and our horizontal stretches first before we do the vertical and horizontal shifts. So the stretches, we'll do the vertical one first. Remember that the number in front determines the vertical stretch. So that's a negative two. It means we multiply all our y values by negative two. So they all change to become, not all of them change, because when you multiply zero by negative two, you don't have any changes. This value here, this b value, Remember that this is kind of opposite of what you would think it is. It doesn't mean that our x values are multiplied by two. It means that our x values are divided by two. So again, we take this x value divided by two, we still get a zero. Pi over two divided by two means that we're now at pi over four. Pi divided by two, well, is just pi over two. Three pi divided by two and divide that by two means that we get three pi over four. And two pi divided by two is just pi. Okay, now that we have these points, then we've done all the stretching, vertical and horizontal stretching to these points, let's start applying the shifting. So the easiest or the easier of the shifts is the vertical shift because it's the number that's added on to the end, this d value as we've been calling it, and it is three units up. And that's pretty easy. We'll just throw in, a, we just add three to everything. All right, so we've got all those values. Now we need to apply the horizontal shift. So it, inside the brackets here, it says x plus pi over six, which means that we're moving to the left pi over six, which means we need to subtract pi over six from each of these numbers. Well, the first one is easy because it's a zero. When we subtract pi over six, we get a negative pi over six. The next one though, you'll have to do a little bit of math. So we have pi over four minus pi over six. Well, we have to find some common denominators 
And so that ends up being three pi over six minus two pi over six. So that leaves us with just a plain old pi over six. If we move the next one over, or we subtract pi over six from it, we get three pi over six minus two pi, or minus pi over six, which gives us two pi over six, which simplifies into pi over three. So, so all this uh, fraction work is means that you need to know how to add fractions, which by grade 12, I'm hoping you're okay with that. Our next one is three pi over four. We're gonna subtract pi over six. Now this becomes a greatest common denominator of 12. I just guess just a common denominator of 12. So we get nine pi over 12 minus two pi over 12, which is seven pi over 12. And our last one, we have pi and we're gonna subtract pi over six. Well, that is just gonna end up with five pi over six. All right, so we have our five main points. They've all been transformed with both stretches and shifts. Now we just need to graph them on our graph. Our first one is negative pi over six comma three. So remember that sine started, normally starts at zero and goes up. And so it's been shifted over to the left and it's been shifted up and then it's been stretched both vertically and horizontally. So we're gonna see what this graph looks like. Our next point is pi over six comma one. Then pi over three comma three. Seven pi over 12 comma five. And then five pi over six comma three. So our graph is gonna look something like this. So what we've got here is a sinusoidal graph. Now normally, as I said, we know that the uh, a sine function starts at zero and goes up and then down and then back up again. But since there's four different things happening here, our graph has been shifted and stretched and moved around four different ways. And so we end up with a graph that looks like a sine wave, but not exactly like a sine wave. So let's start talking about these uh, things that we're supposed to find. The vertical displacement is just how much it's been moved up or down. So that's what we've been calling vertical shift before. So vertical displacement is a value of three because it's been moved up three units. The amplitude is just from the middle um, to the maximum or minimum point. So our amplitude in this case is two. We don't have to include the sign on that. The sign just means that the graph has been reflected in the x-axis. The period is from where it starts to where it finishes, or we could use the value. So we've um, changed this function a bit as well. We've now taken out a greatest common factor of two. So knowing that our period length normally is two pi, and we have a two out here, which means it's now gonna be half as big. So our period length is now just pi. Phase shift is how far it's been shifted. Well, in our, when we manipulated this function, we found out that it's gonna be shifted to the left. Phase shift is to the left by a value of pi over six. The domain and range, well, we only did one um, cycle through this uh, of this function, but really it goes on forever to the left and to the right, and so we are going to call that domain x e r which means all the real numbers it goes on forever to the left and to the right and our range of this function our range is just from how low it goes to how high it goes so our range is going to be y is greater than or equal to one but it's less than or equal to five all right our second example it says find the equation of the following function in the form of y equals a sine b x minus c plus d where a is greater than zero which just means a is positive and in the form y equals a cos b x minus c plus d where a is also greater than zero. So here's our, equa our not equation, sorry, our picture of the graph of the function. We need to find out the values for a, b, c, and d. So I think the easiest one that, to usually find is, in my opinion, is d. d is how far the middle of the graph has moved up or down. So the middle of the graph is right here and it has been moved down one unit from the x-axis, because normally the middle of the graph is on the x-axis. So right now we know that d is negative one. The next easiest letter to find, I think, 
is A, because A is just your amplitude, and it's from the middle to the maximum point. So from the middle, which is at negative 1, you move up 2 units to get to the top. So that just means A is 2. Notice that you also move 2 units to get to the bottom. The next two are a little bit trickier. Um, C is probably the next easiest one. But in order to find C, that changes between a sine graph and a cos graph. So hopefully you remember that a sine graph starts at 0, 0, goes up, then down, and then back to normal. And that a cos graph starts at 1, or 0, 1, goes down, and then back up. So if we're talking about sine and cos separately, which is asking us to find two different equations, then we know that for sine, we have got to start at probably this point right here. So if we're talking about, oh, but it also said that sine, um, A has to be greater than zero. So we would be starting right here. So for a sine graph, your C value is gonna be shifted over pi over three to the right. and that's for sine. For cosine, it's a little bit different because cosine is supposed to start at a height of one. So this point here would be your cosine graph. So this is in between pi over three and two pi over three. So we need to be able to find the value between pi over three and two pi over three. Well, that would just be the average of pi over three and two pi over three. So that makes that three pi over three divided by 2, well that just leaves you with pi over 2. So your C value for cosine would be a pi over 2, also to the right. And finally we need to find our our value for B. So we need to know what the period length of this graph is so we can compare it to a regular period length of 2 pi. So just looking at the graph I can see from here all the way through one cycle means that it has been moved um, or it's been compressed a little bit because it's supposed to be 2 pi and from here to here is actually 2 pi over 3. So remember that we had for our period length there was a little equation and it was 2 pi over b to find our period length. Well our period length is actually 2 pi over 3 which means that b equals 3. So again, you go from where it starts to where it starts repeating itself, and you could pick any two points on this graph. I just chose a point that's at zero, and then it makes it easier to, to determine the actual new period length. And so again, that new period length was two pi over three, which means we have a B value of three. So to write these two equations isn't very difficult because we just plug these values for A, B, C, and D into this form. So y equals a is 2 sine b is 3 x minus, because it's moving to the right, pi over 3, because we're talking about sine, plus a d value, oh, that'll be minus 1. And then for cosine, we have y equals 2 cos 3, those don't change, x minus pi over 2 minus one. So really the, the tricky parts are finding the new period length, but remember you can always compare it to the original. It's supposed to be two pi, and we know that um, the little equation we have for the new period length is two pi over b. And the other tricky thing is just knowing that if you're talking about a sine graph that we're starting, we're at zero, zero and going up. A positive sine graph, a negative sine graph would start at zero, zero and go down. And if we're talking about a cosine graph, that means that we're starting at a height of one and going down. A negative cosine graph would actually start at a height of negative one and go up. So that would be like a negative cosine graph. So in summary, the transformations that we learned about previously in this course apply to trigonometric functions just as much as they apply to quadratic, absolute value, and radical functions. So you need to know about shifts, you need to know about stretches and reflections. So when we had a function y equals a sine b x minus c plus d, each of these letters mean something. And likewise for cosine. And to find the equation of sinusoidal function, take notice of the vertical shift. So vertical shift was d. The amplitude was a. The horizontal stretch, 
So that was when the period length is changing. And to do that, you look at the start and the end point of one period. And then the horizontal shift. And we said how far that is away from the starting point. Remember that sine is supposed to start at 0, 0. And cosine is supposed to start at one, uh, 0, 1. So if you know the starting point and what these graphs look at, look like, sorry, then finding the equation of this thing becomes a lot easier. And your assignment is on pages 250 to 255. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you later.